Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I'm the one and only Mighty the Armadillo here and once again I am from the likes of the Mercy Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll present to you probably the final Let's Play of 2021 because we're almost there to 2022 so I hope you guys may be looking forward to the new year and myself included. So because of this, as you can see we are doing a Let's Play of another Donkey Kong game but this time around we're going to be hitting to the game boy of all things and because of this though as you can see on the title we're about to be playing through donkey kong land for the game boy this game first came out in 1995 the same year as when donkey kong country 2 roll around for the super nintendo and just immediately after the events of donkey kong country 1 they came out in 1994 because of that though um you know, this game uh, came out after Donkey Kong Country 1 and before Donkey Kong Country 2 because, well, if you probably can tell for that particular time itself or something like that. But anyway, uh, much like in any other Game Boy Let's Plays, I'm going to be playing on the emulator and also, if you couldn't tell with the actual color scheme, I'm going to be playing as in the, safe, uh, the Super Game Boy mode. Which, uh, I'll discuss all that in a second, because as you can tell, we added up any forms of the world map, as you can see. Now, generally speaking, that structurally speaking, it feels incredibly similar to Donkey Kong Country, the original game. But of course, we'll get to more details about this as soon as we dive right into the gameplay right now. So, yeah, if you ever played Donkey Kong Country before, you know exactly how this goes. You're able to once again go into the 2D platformer kind of style. And also, as you can tell, we're going to be taking control of not only Donkey Kong, but also Diddy Kong as well. Because, yes, this is more accurately like a Game Boy version of Donkey Kong Country. Except it doesn't call it Donkey Kong Country, unlike the Game Boy Color counterpart. That it remains the exactly the same aside from enhanced graphics or something. So... But as you can see, that since I accidentally got hurt by an enemy, so this means it automatically allows me to switch over to uh, Diddy Kong. So because of that though, yeah, what's the even difference than the forms of how it does it on the previous Donkey Kong Country games? That rather than take control of two Kongs at the same time, instead we're actually going to be taking control of just only one Kong at a time. Because if one of them is out, you have to take control of another. So because of that though, even though the remains of the game plays out exactly the same as Donkey Kong Country, except that the fact that, well, I'll explain more details about this in a second. So either way, so as you can see, we stumbled across ourselves two bonus areas in the first level in the game. So because of that though, and uh, yeah, structurally speaking, just like in Donkey Kong Country 1, you have to find them in order to able to complete the whole game. So because of that, yeah, as you can see on that estimation mark, this means that actually represents you found every single bonus areas. So yeah, just like any forms of in the previous Donkey Kong Country games, I'm pretty sure. Or, generally speaking, just the entirety of the Super Nintendo game trilogies and stuff like that. So, yeah, the first stage, if you can't tell about the fact that what's even stranger is the fact that this game doesn't seem to be able to have any level names. Although, for what I've seen on Wikipedia, that the first stage we've obviously went into is uh, Jungle Joint. So, it's basically it's like a typical standard jungle environment level. And the second stage we're about to be heading to right now is it appears to be a snow level at the very beginning of the game. I mean, what is this like? Very similar to Donkey Kong Country 3, but except the fact that this is our RPC inspired by Donkey Kong Country 1. So anyway, for this particular stage, um, as far as I can recall correctly what this level's name is, it's named Freezing Fun. So, and I believe this level uh, contains only one bonus area, because yes, uh, differently from the likes of the previous uh, Donkey Kong Country game, that some of these other levels might contain some a little amount of those bonus areas, but what if we get into the next world, that uh, some of them contains one bonus areas, but the majority of, let's just say, for example, in the underwater levels that we're about to be hitting into later on, that those underwater levels does not feature any of the bonus areas at all. So, yeah, you probably get the idea of what this is going until tomorrow. So because of this, though, uh, today's day is, of course, the uh, the 28th of December today, in this case, in 2021 today. And it looks like we've only just got about, um, I would classify it for saying, four days to go until 2022. 
roll around. So, even then though, in fact, let me know in the comments below for the question of the day. Uh, are you looking forward for, uh, 2022? Because I surely do. Especially noticeable with these more games coming out for it, such as, of course, Mario Plus Rapid Sparks of Hope, Splatoon 3, and all the other games I'm really looking forward to at this point. So... And as you can see, we're now on the third stage called, uh, Simine Swing, if I recall correctly what that level's name. So, because of that, once again, we're going back into the jungle environment, so because of that, though, we can able to do some, what else? Some more rope swings and all that stuff, so... Oh yeah, there's something worth classifying for noticing this. The only common problem with this game though, and as you can see I've got, uh, got myself my first step of the playthrough, is that the screen crunch will ruin everything. Especially noticeable, this is on a Game Boy. Although, to be fair, for the game's credit, they at least did try. They are able to make a mock-up version of the forms of the original Donkey Kong Country. Except the fact that, obviously, with, uh, some less colors and all that stuff, despite the fact that if you're trying to play this on the Super Game Boy, or, uh, the Game Boy Player on the GameCube, then it does manage to be able to feature some bit of color. But most of the time, about the fact that if you try to play this on the 3DS Virtual Console re-release, because yes, this game also came out on the 3DS on the Virtual Console lineup, and I will have to admit that right away, do not recommend playing the game on the 3DS, because obviously that version has a lack of color, so you can't really tell that the actual colors or the black and white just somewhat blends into one another. So because of that, oh and by the way, there's another bonus area just right down there, along with the forms of obtaining the end right there. So, now as you can see, we stumbled across a different kind of bonus area, and that's the reason why we keep on collecting those coin tokens throughout the whole game. And basically what these coin tokens can do, that if you're trying to activate the button switch, basically this allows you to able to actually obtain, well, 1-ups, or life, as what it's known for, and because of that, though, as you can see on the bottom, um, bottom portion of the screen, that heart represents your life's counter, so because of that, though, hopefully we're trying to attain ins the insane amount of extra lives as much as I can, but, uh, believe me, this game will be twice as difficult as the original game, due to the fact that, well, I will have to admit, though, a lot of screen crunch, also the physics and the momentum, gets a bit screwy sometimes. Especially noticeable if you're trying to do the actual, uh, the coolest, uh, roll jump ability, but I swear to Christ, my physics and my m m momentum doesn't seem to work with me half the time, so because of that, though, yeah, prepare yourselves a lot of death situations at this point, because, well, it's pretty obvious, because this is on a Game Boy nonetheless, so... But I digress. So the next level, as you can see, we ended up in the forms of in the ship level for a change, which it kind of feels very similar to the likes of Donkey Kong Country 2, except the fact that this game did it first, technically. So because of that, though, I believe this level is called, uh, Deck Trek. So, yeah, I just want to classify that. And I believe this stage contains two bonus areas, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, that pretty much stopped up as such, so... But anyway, um... I, I guess that's pretty much as far as I can say in terms of uh, Donkey Kong Land for the Game Boy. I mean, obviously, it's like a Game Boy version of uh, Donkey Kong Country, except the fact that, well, if you couldn't tell already, that also, that some of these music are actually like 8 bit incarnations of some of these familiar music from the Super Nintendo games. So, yeah, I'm also able to actually say this to this point. So. Yeah, you probably get the idea about that, so anyway, so let's go ahead and keep on jumping up. And also, because if about the fact the matter is though, since we are going all the way higher up, so this means that trying to go back down to the bottom will be a bad idea, because obviously with the actual screen crunch and stuff like that, so this means that, uh, yes, you will also die if you manage to go down either way further, so because of that, there's going to be a lot of trial and error in this game, so because of that though, yeah, you might as well be able to see that in just a moment, so... Anyway, so, uh, here we have another bonus area, which actually features one of those familiar animal buddies that was actually introduced in Donkey Kong Country 1. And, uh, speaking of the animal buddies, though, and specifically in this game, um, there's only two animal buddies this time around, as opposed to the ones in the original game, 
that's uh, usually, for I can tell, about the fact that they actually got quite a few of those animal friends in the original Donkey Kong Country game. But for whatever reason, in Donkey Kong Land, they only featured two animal buddies, which as you saw, from the first level in the game that we've uh, managed to come across into Rambi, the rhinoceros, and also Expresso, the ostrich. So, and that's about it. So, clearly it's because of the limitations of, uh, although if you're probably wondering, what about On Guard the Swordfish? I'm sorry that uh, On Guard the Swordfish wasn't in this game. I, 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 I have no idea why they just removed him. Probably because of the limitations of the handheld, or maybe because of the forms of, uh, well, pretty much the handheld limitations, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, anyway, so here we go with this next level, which appears to be buddy forms of going back to the snow level again. And this time, this level's called Rope Revine. So, because obviously what the main emphasis on this stage is all about is the fact that we get out to hold on to the actual rope at all times in certain parts. So, yeah, that pretty much stopped up for this level. So, uh, yeah, it seems pretty weird that we actually, um, pretty much going to be exploring for the snowy environment during the very beginning of the game, as opposed to in Donkey Kong Country 1, that it only happens during the course of uh, the fourth world, if I could recall that correctly. Oh yeah, another bonus area that's right down there, but unfortunately I took a death because of the fact that I uh, didn't touch the actual uh, barrel, so that's unfair. But anyways, um... Yeah, I suppose another thing I should probably explain about this as well, that unlike in Donkey Kong Country 1, that in order to be able to save the game, you need to meet up with uh, Candy Kong in order to be able to actually find a safe spot. Whilst in here, basically in order to save the game, you have to be sure you need to collect all the Kong letters. So yeah, if you think that the original Donkey Kong Country were able to give you an extra life, if you managed to be able to get all the Kong letters, well, Turns out, as you can see, I've already collected all of those Kong letters, and basically if you do, if you finish the level, basically that actually gives you the ability to save your game. So, yeah, that's a bit of a weird change, but uh, I digress. So, anyway, so we can hit on to the next level we can uh, probably hit into, or we can probably hit backwards for a bit by able to actually go to the previous level, but obviously I'm going to be mainly focusing on other stages from now on. So, here's a massive shortcut by the way, if you really want to skip the entire portions of the stage, because, well obviously as I said this before, this game can get really difficult at times, mainly due to screen crunch, as well as physics and, uh, well, momentum gets a bit screwy at some point, but, uh, usually that's as far as I can say about it, so. And I just realized we're going back into the ship uh, level environment, and this, uh, I think this level is called uh, Ranking Rumble. So because of that though, as far as I recall that correctly for that level name, so... But I digress, and uh, oh god, some of these uh, weird snake-like enemies that we can't possibly uh, deal with unless that, that we have to able to dodge them. And also because about the fact that if you're following through our... Uh, let's play of Mega Man and Base back in 2018 that you know with the forms of the screen crunch I mentioned this earlier This means you can't really see what's up ahead or even especially noticeable you can't see from the bottom So it's all about guessing work. So yeah, that could be kind of annoying and all that stuff Especially noticeable if you're trying so hard to able to actually get some progression into this game Or even especially noticeable if you're trying to find some of these uh bonus areas in particular, but most of the time that you will get screwed over no matter what if you keep on like, uh, figure out what the actual guesswork of, um, you know, some of these enemy placements are involved. So, here's the first bonus area right here, so you have to go down there and that's all you have to do while grabbing some more tokens and also some bananas as well. Thankfully, if you do manage to mess up at the bonus areas, it really doesn't matter. So it's just all the matter of trying to find the bonus areas will actually requires you to get 100%. Although, unlike Donkey Kong, Con uh, Donkey Kong Land 2 and 3, that you do need to complete the bonus areas in order to able to get some 100% completion. So, yeah, speaking of the forms of Donkey Kong Land 2 and 3, um, basically, unlike those two games, where basically, if you do somehow manage to free uh, Donkey Kong up from the likes of the DK barrel. Unfortunately though, in this game in particular though, it doesn't tell you 
that uh, specifically if you have Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong with you. So because of that though, it's all about guessing work too. Whilst unlike in Donkey Kong Land 2 and 3, that they did manage to fix the problem. So because of that though, I will say, I, of all the actual Donkey Kong Land games I ever played, I think this might actually be one of the weakest in the series, mainly because of the forms of some frustrating difficulty, or maybe because of the forms of how the fact that there might be some uh, very, very weird uh, momentum problems, so at least as far as I'm guessing this correctly. So in this case though, that's as far as I can usually try to imagine of saying that. So anyway, so let's go ahead and make a leaps of faith there and uh, activate the rope. And that pretty much leads us to the next bonus area, which all I guess is basically is just two moving platforms plus some of these more tokens that we can able to obtain from. But that's pretty much about it, as far as I can usually see about this, so... And of course, that's uh, like any forms of the past years, once this Let's Play will be finished, then I'll pretty much guarantee I'll let uh, Maxi will mention more about uh, the final thoughts of 2021. Because I'm not gonna lie, that is actually pretty okay. Like, not the best year in the world, but uh, there might be still some problems, but... Uh, then again, uh, we'll talk more about that until whenever we get into the final day of the forms of 2021. So we can expect uh, that we can able to actually just about to able to discuss upon, well, quite a number of things for uh, game announcements or game releases for that matter, and especially noticeable with just anything else for the most part. So, but anyway, let's just go ahead and. Uh, be very careful, and good thing the goal is just right there, and plus I've obtained every single Kong ladder, so this means I can able to save my glorious game. So in this case, we got up to 21% done, so that seems kind of fast. But anyways, before we move on to the next level, let's head backwards for a bit, because we somehow skipped over this next level right here. And this appears to be another jungle environment level, and I believe this level is called, um, Tire Trail if I recall correctly. So because of that though, first of all, the bo the first bonus area is just at the very beginning of the level, by the way. So I just wanted to let you guys know where exactly where that is. So, now of course, like in any other Donkey Kong Country Let's Plays, including the forms of recently Donkey Kong Country 3, that's how obviously Sonic the Hedgehog has already accomplished that Let's Play ever since in uh, August, that um, I'm going to be going for the whole entirety of 100% completion, basically. So because, meaning that you have to obtain every single bonus there is, and that's pretty much about it when it comes to 100% complete completion as far as, you know, requirements goes. Although, unlike, you know, Donkey Kong Land 2 and 3, they do need to able to actually get some of these collectibles, like, for instance, in Donkey Kong Land 2, which is basically, it's like the Game Boy version of Donkey Kong Country 2, that creme coins still exist, so... And, uh, same applies to Donkey Kong Land 3, that, uh, basically it's like the Game Boy version of Donkey Kong Country 3, that, uh, you are still able to come across into those bonus coins, basically, so, uh... Yeah, it's nothing different apart from the fact that with the level themes, or specifically with both this game along with Donkey Kong Land 3, most of these levels are entirely different, whilst compared to Donkey Kong Land 2, it's basically it's like the exact same levels as in the forms of the Super Nintendo counterparts, but with the forms of a, uh, well, screen crunch and also with uh, 8-bit music, so... Oh, son of a biscuit, I somehow died due to that specific screen crunch. Oh, that's a bit of annoying. But oh well, no big deal, because obviously we've already, uh, managed to obtain every single bonus areas, basically, so... Yeah, there's nothing to worry about this, so... Thankfully, just like in Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2 and 3, uh, most of these bonus areas are saved. So, whilst unlike whenever we get into Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze, that, uh, basically most of these bonus areas will not be saved. Well, unless if you try and succeed, so, within the first attempt, so... And of course, just like any forms of in Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3, uh, you can able to retry any of those bonus areas uh, at any time. Well, generally speaking for this game, along with Donkey Kong Country 1, it really doesn't matter if you either failed on a bonus stage or cleared it. So, as a result though, it really doesn't matter. It's entirely up to you. So, even then though, that's it for that level. So let's go and move on into another jungle level, and that's what appears to be body forms of Congo Carnage. So, and I believe in this level's case, it's going to be involved around in, uh, 
you know, some more rope climbing and also some more barrel blasting every once in a while. So, uh, yeah, with that previous level that we've done, uh, that level contains three bonus areas. Whilst in this stage contains only two bonus areas, along with the next level. So because of that, though, hopefully we would be able to find them no matter what. So... Yeah, I think for the most part, that, uh, that's as far as I can usually try to describe uh, Donkey Kong Land. So, it's pretty impressive back in the day, but uh, after playing it for a while, that uh, it does feel a little bit more uh, wonky in areas. It, even compared to Donkey Kong Land 2 and 3, they did manage to succeed. So, uh, well, for the most part anyway. Well, that's not to say the game is bad, far from it. It's just that they just have some very questionable design choices like, you know, wonky uh, physics and stuff like that, or even uh, some stiff momentum, but um, that's as far as I can say about this for the most part. So anyway, here's another bonus area just right there, which obviously remains the same with token uh, life system, but we'll carry uh, 14 of those tokens as it is, so hopefully we'll be able to get some more extra lives if we keep on falling off or even dying if worst. So... Anyway, so let's go and continue on and try to avoid those Kremblings right there while we uh, try to avoid those uh, Zingers. Oh, dang it, that was unavoidable. But thankfully, we managed to able to uh, get some bit of invincibility frames, but sadly, I couldn't predict that fast enough. So, oh well, whatever. But at least, at the very least, we got the, uh, the midway point. So that should be okay, I guess. So... Anyways, we'll grab some more extra lives if we uh, can, but sometimes you have to be super precise with the angles, because obviously if you uh, off by a little bit of angle, then basically you're not going to get any extra lives if you manage to able to get those tokens, basically. So, uh... Anyways, let's go ahead and do this little uh, steel barrel ride. So, yeah, that pretty much stuffed up for such, so... I suppose, I suppose I should probably explain about the story in this game follows us to, is the fact that, well, during the course of how the fact that, well, usually relatively speaking, that, um, well, obviously after the events of the original game ended, after beating King K. Roll for the first time, and basically Cranky Kong was like, you know what, your adventure was actually the most successful than he ever thought. And because of that though, because of the forms of those fancy graphics, because obviously this has been made, from advanced computer modeling for the sake of the actual character models and stuff. However, here's the thing though, is the fact that Cranky remains, uh, that uh, he's going to discuss upon the forms of uh, Donkey and Diddy Kong for able to take on some plenty of challenges on the adventure on the 8-bit black and white system on the Game Boy. And after they bet, they made a bet, Cranky arranges for King K. Roll to steal the banana horde overnight while Diddy originally agreed to the bet and Donkey Kong was furious because he wanted to watch the banana bowl however they weren't able to get the bananas back so yeah it's basically it's like a rehash story from the likes of Donkey Kong Country 1 so I guess this story is not much uh, different from there so it just remains the same as the Super Nintendo counterparts so Anyway, so let's move on to the next level, as you can see on screen. We're about to be hit on to back into the snow level, and this level is called Arctic Barrel Arsenal. And because of that, though, much like in that infamous level, which is, of course, Snow Barrel Blast level in Donkey Kong Country 1, we have to deal with even more barrel blasting. However, here's the thing about this, though. I feel like those barrel blasting uh, levels like this are actually way easier here, then he forms of how it does it on Donkey Kong Country 1, just because of how the fact that since this is on the Game Boy nonetheless, and because of that though, most of these barrels moves a lot slower than he forms of how it does it on the faster movements from the likes of the original game. So, that seems uh, cool I guess, even especially noticeable about the fact that, well, generally speaking about the fact that we can able to actually make several of uh, Segments a bit easier, but at the same time quite difficult due to the forms of screen crunch as you probably already know So in this case though, let's go ahead and uh, oh god that was close Oh wee, that was a close one, especially noticeable I'm almost gonna get myself screwed over no matter what But thankfully I managed to accomplish it, so uh Anyway, so we all got up to 33% done of the game And I basically gathered two of those bonus areas done, so Anyways, once you reach the very end of each world, we stumble across the boss fight. So, for instance, the first boss in this game is Wild Sting Fling. 
So, this just feels like a weird first boss in the game, because I first thought it was actually a Bifa from the original game, but it turns out that the boss fight is entirely different too. Like, for instance, in this boss right there, we need to take down the insane amount of those, uh, Manta Ray enemies, and then basically, if you do manage to dish out the forms of most of those, uh, Manta Rays, then that's pretty much about it for this entire boss. And, yeah, that much else to this particular boss fight. It gets a bit tricky if it starts to go fast, but, uh, if you do manage to beat the boss, you get yourself some bananas. So, yeah, I guess we'll pretty much get to status right now. We'll get the endings off here. So join us next time for more of Let's Play of Donkey Kong Land. That is the fact that we'll hit on to the second world, known as Kremlantis, which, if I recall that correctly. So, yeah, I'll see you guys until tomorrow. So, yeah, later, fellas.